Welcome to the ninth video in this series on orchestration. In the last video, we discussed some specific strategies for writing for the brass section, including breaking it down into subsections and using different instruments as tools for growth. In this video, we are going to once again shift gears and start talking about the woodwind section. We'll get to know each of the instruments a little bit better and figure out just what makes this section so unique compared to the strings and brass. So with that, let's get started. The woodwind section is the least powerful section that we've covered so far. It has neither the raw strength of the brass nor the sheer number of the strings. However, it boasts of more variety in tone colors and timbre than the strings and brass combined. The variety is so great, in fact, that the woodwinds are traditionally broken into three distinct subsections just in order to make orchestrating them more manageable. These subsections are each determined by the type of mouthpiece that each instrument uses. There are single reeds, double reeds, and flutes, which includes any instrument that doesn't use a reed. Each subsection has its own unique timbre that relates the instruments belonging to them together. Flutes sound different than the single reeds, and the single reeds sound different from the double reeds. Additionally, the various registers of each individual instrument all have dramatically different tone colors. These shifts in tone color are of the utmost importance to keep in mind when orchestrating your music, as a flute in its high register will have a vastly different sound from the same flute in its lower register. For the remainder of this video, we're going to take a closer look at each of these subsections and the instruments that they consist of. Starting with the flutes. As I mentioned before, this subsection contains any woodwind that doesn't use a wooden reed to produce its sound. The most frequently used flutes in the orchestra are the piccolo and, you guessed it, the flute. As a subsection, the flutes tend to become more and more powerful the higher up in their register you move. Likewise, the lower in their register that you move, the less and less powerful they become. In general, flutes tend to be very soft and quiet in their lowest registers, and very shrill and piercing in their highest registers. The piccolo is the highest member of the flute family, with an incredibly high range of D5 to C8, or the D in octave above middle C, all the way up to the C two octaves higher than high C. Now, the piccolo is a transcribing instrument, which, just as a reminder, means that the pitches the audience hears will not be the same notes that the players read. My video explaining transcribing instruments will be coming out soon, so don't worry if you don't quite understand this yet. All that we need to know for now is that the piccolo is written an octave lower than what it sounds like. The piccolo has approximately three primary tone colors, depending on where you are in its register. The highest register is incredibly shrill and very powerful. A single piccolo playing in its highest register can easily be heard over an entire orchestra playing at the same time. However, it's very exhausting for everyone involved. This register requires a lot of air for the players, and very quickly becomes distracting and annoying to the audience. As such, this particular register is best used in very short and strategic bursts. The middle register is very strong and bright, and can be heard fairly well over the other instruments of the orchestra. The low register is incredibly haunting and very intimate. However, it's also incredibly weak, and doesn't have much chance carrying over many other instruments, so it's best used in very quiet moments and when doubling another solo instrument to provide a little extra color to the sound. Now, like with all woodwinds, there's no exact cutoff point for each of these registers. The tone colors tend to shift more on a spectrum than anything else. However, since the piccolo has a three octave range and three registers, a useful guide is to think of each octave as belonging predominantly to their respective registers. The flute has a traditional range of C4, or middle C, to D7, or the D three octaves above middle C. Most modern-day flutes, however, can add another major second on the bottom of that range, making it a B4 to D7. The flute is not a transposing instrument, so the notes that you write will be the same pitches that the audience hears. Just like the piccolo, the flute has three distinct registers that we can tentatively assign to each of its three octaves. The highest register is shrill and piercing and exhausting for everybody, just like the piccolo. The middle register has a very sweet, bright, and clear tone color that is suited excellently for melodies. The lowest register is a very rich and very beautiful tone color, 
but just like with the piccolo, it's very weak and only really suited for intimate moments in your music. In addition to the piccolo and flute, the flute subsection also includes an alto flute and a bass flute. However, these instruments are not nearly as common and follow the same basic patterns that we see in both the piccolo and the flute, so I won't spend any time discussing them in this video. Just know that they're available to you should you decide to try them out in your own music. Moving on to the next subsection, we find the single reeds. Single reeded instruments include any woodwind instrument that uses a single wooden reed as part of their mouthpiece. In the traditional orchestra, this includes the clarinets. Single reed instruments tend to follow a similar pattern to flutes in which they become more powerful and piercing the higher in their range you go, and quieter and less powerful the lower you go in their range. However, the differences aren't as dramatic as they are in the flute section. The clarinet is an incredibly versatile instrument that has greater dynamic control throughout its entire range than most other woodwinds. For example, a clarinet can play quieter in its upper registers than a flute can, though the difference isn't that large. There are multiple types of clarinet, but the average range for each is between an E3 to a D6, or the E below middle C, all the way up to the D above high C. The most common types of clarinet are the clarinet in B-flat, which is written a major second lower than what is heard, and the clarinet in A, which is written a minor third lower than what is written. Now, neither one sounds dramatically different from the other, so if you ever find yourself in a position where you get to choose which one, I would recommend going with whichever one has an easier key signature to read after transposing. Now, before getting into tone colors, there is one thing that needs to be mentioned about the clarinet, and that is that it has a breaking point between B flat 5 and B5. These two notes are very difficult to perform right after the other, even for professional players, and this has to do with the way that the two notes are fingered. It's highly recommended that you avoid any fast-paced and repetitive passages that pass through both of these notes. For example, trills won't work, and quick ostinati aren't likely to either. Similar to the flutes, the high register for the clarinet is very powerful and shrill. It can be heard quite easily, but also becomes exhausting to both the audience and the players pretty quickly. This register should be saved for strategic moments. The middle register is the most frequently used and has an incredibly expressive and melodic sound that can be used to great effect in a number of emotional settings. Finally, the lowest register has an incredibly rich, deep, and full sound to it, but it also has significantly less carry power. It should be used strategically in intimate settings where you can guarantee it will be heard over the other instruments being used, if any. The bass clarinet is closely related to the clarinet and is even used as a secondary instrument performed when needed by one of the clarinet players of the orchestra. Very rarely will an orchestra ever have a dedicated bass clarinet player. With a sounding range of D2 to G6 and a written range an octave and a major second higher, its primary role is to help increase the range available to the clarinets. For example, performing a melody, countermelody, or harmonic line that is too low to be of any use on the clarinet. This naturally means that the lowest register is the most frequently used register on the instrument, because anything in its higher range is performable on the clarinet, which tends to make it the default choice when choosing between the two instruments. The bass clarinet's low register has a very deep and rich tone color, but also doesn't have much carrying power. So once again, if you're trying to feature this sound, make sure that the musical setting is intimate enough to make the most of it. In addition to the clarinets, saxophones are another common family of single reeded instruments. However, they are very rarely found in your typical orchestra, so we're not going to cover them in this video. The third and final subsection in the woodwind section is the double reeds. It consists of instruments that use two wooden reeds in their mouthpieces, hence the name double reeds. In contrast to the flutes and single reeds, double reeded instruments tend to be the most powerful in their lowest registers, and become thinner in their upper registers. Our first double reeded instrument is the oboe. As the soprano of the double reeded family, this instrument tends to be used most frequently to perform melodies and counter melodies. It is not a transposing instrument and has a range of B flat 4 to G6 or the B-flat just below middle C, all the way up to the G above high C. However, when you're working with melodies, you typically want to restrict that range to around F4 to C6. 
this portion of the instrument's range is the most controllable and the most expressive. Anything outside of it isn't all that helpful for melodic purposes. Regarding tone colors, the oboe's highest register is very thin and pinched sounding, but can be very useful for haunting and soft moments. The middle register, which encompasses the majority of the melodic range, is very sweet and incredibly expressive, making it ideal for melodies. The lowest register is very thick and powerful, but not all that musical. It's best used for very raw and very primal moments. The next instrument we've got is the English horn, also known as the cor anglaise. Just like the bass clarinet, there will rarely ever be a dedicated English horn player in an orchestra. Typically, one of the oboe players will simply switch to the English horn as needed. This instrument exists primarily to extend the reach of the oboe, so it can most commonly be found performing melodies or countermelodies that just wouldn't work on the oboe due to either range or tone color reasons. The English horn is a transcribing instrument and has a sounding range of E3 to C6, but is written a perfect fifth higher at B4 to G6. Its lowest register has a very thick and slow kind of sound, while the middle register is very expressive and lyrical, with a slightly darker and mellow sound than the oboe. The highest register is very rarely used, as the same pitches can be performed on an oboe, which tends to be the default instrument when choosing between the two. Next up, we have the bassoon, acting as both a tenor and bass instrument for the double reeds and just the woodwind section in general. The bassoon has a range of B-flat 2 to E5. Its highest register is very haunting and lyrical, making it an ideal choice for melodies in very intimate settings. Because remember that double reeds have less power in their upper registers. Its middle register is incredibly warm and very expressive, and an excellent choice for blending with other instruments. The low register is very loud and powerful, with some good heft to it. It's typically used for doubling the bass line. Our final instrument is the contrabass bassoon. This instrument is probably the rarest woodwind that we'll cover in depth, and you should never really assume that you'll have one to work with. But they can be incredibly beautiful and very useful if you get the chance. The contrabass bassoon is one of the very few true bass instruments of the orchestra. It has a ridiculously low range of B-flat 1 to A4, but is written an octave higher as B-flat 2 to A5. The lowest half of the range is the most powerful and effective portion, and thus the most commonly used. Along with the tuba and double bass, the contrabass bassoon can most frequently be found performing the bass line in your music. And with that, we've reached the end of yet another video in our orchestration series. I hope that you found it helpful and that you've learned a few things that you can use in your own musical adventures. If you enjoyed the video and would like to be alerted when the next in the series is released, please like and subscribe to the channel, and please share it with anyone else you think would enjoy it. In the meantime, thank you very much for your support. Keep working hard, keep studying, and as always, keep writing new music.